in the Bengals locker room with Orlando Brown Jr. Orlando, we are uh, wrapping up another week of camp. What, uh, what's it been like in Cincinnati? You were just telling me how much you feel the love from the fans. Yeah, no, man, I'm, I'm absolutely loving the city, man. Just, uh, it's been so much love, uh, so much respect and appreciation, man, for me and, and the team. You know, it's, it's amazing, you know, how great of a city this is, man. It's somewhat hidden, you know what I mean? A lot of people don't talk about it. A lot of people don't even know uh, what's here, man. But, you know, it's a great community, man, and, and I'm very happy to be here. It's funny. I, I got this feeling with Ted, and now you. He hasn't been here long, you know, 18 months. You haven't been here long, five, six months, and yet it feels like home? Is that fair to say? It does, man. It does feel like home, man. I, you know, my plan is to spend the rest of my career here and, uh, you know, play as long as I can, man. I mean, I can't say enough great things about the city, man. His team, you know, obviously Burrow, man, and, you know, Zach Taylor, Frank Pollock. You know, it's just it's so many great things here, so many great pieces, Cordovos and Ted Cares, the guys I'm suiting up with every single day. Um, you know, and the community, man, is just, it's been a lot of open arms. And, I mean, I'm just, I'm appreciating, man, enjoying it, man, just going to work every day, coming in here, grinding in practice, and, you know, being able to give back in the community as well when I can. It's perfect time to mention that. You're going to be in the community. August 22nd, 4 to 9, a kickoff party for the 2023 season at Aces Pickleball in Norwood. I'll be there as well. We'll do an interview. You'll be signing autographs, meet and greet, a bunch of stuff. So how excited are you to, to get to know more of these Bengals fans in person? I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get around the people, get around the city. I enjoy doing these meet and greets, man, getting to see the kids, getting to see, you know, some of the men and women that, that love and, and uh, you know, love coming to the games, love watching us play, especially up front, man. I'm really excited to get out there. Let's talk about camp a little bit. And, and obviously the world revolves around Joe Burrow. But let's talk specifically about the trenches because you have to face Trey Hendrickson every day. These guys are dealing with, you know, Jonah's dealing with Sam Hubbard, and then they have a guy, Miles Murphy, coming off the bench on the second. How tough is this defensive line? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the best defensive lines in the NFL, man. And I think their production over the last two or three years proves that in being in back-to-back -back AFC championships. Trey's been to back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, I believe, man. Uh, obviously, just re signed for a huge deal with a huge extension. Uh, B.J. Hill is such a special player. Sam Hubbard, um, the list goes on and on, man. Joe Asai. I mean, we we got a lot of we got a lot of rushers and we got a lot of really good defensive linemen. And I think when you've got a great front four and guys that can come in and rotate and play, I mean, the sky's the limit, man, for what you can do defensively, mixing in coverages, man to man. You know, sometimes you don't have to send five; you'll win with four. DJ Reader, I got I know I got to ask you about him. I, I know you haven't faced him a ton, but you you still go up against him, so big time, man. Yeah, I mean he's a baller, man. I mean another guy that's you know so, uh, very underrated, very underappreciated. Uh, you know from seems like from scouts, not necessarily players, because you walk around in some of these NFL locker rooms, even at the Pro Bowl, that's one of the first names that comes up for interior defenders. So I mean he's another guy, man. That's a that's a baller that you know I got the utmost respect for. On the twenty second at eight, says I want to ask you more about how you became a Bengal. But let's say this March, someone calls you, and I know you haven't gone through a season yet, but this coming March, someone calls you and says, ah, the Bengals are interested in me. So far, what would you tell them about the Oregon? No, man, I would just tell them, you know, this is a place where you come to be yourself and you come to really, truly gain that confidence, gain that understanding. The way that we do things here is very unique, uh, different from anything I ever experienced, just with the way that they take care of our bodies, the way that our off season was with the huge emphasis on understanding and learning the playbook, not stressing our bodies, uh, training camp now being more physical, but still a gradual uh, wind up. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing city as well, man, for your family. Um, I mean, man, the list goes on and on. I mean, the assistant coaches here, our head coach, I mean, it's it's all great. It's all great, man. They've, it's been great to me, and, you know, I'm looking forward for it, looking forward to continue to grow here. I would say if I had to describe uh, Zach Taylor, I would say player's coach. But Frank Pollock, how would you describe him? Because he's intense. He's, he's an old-school offensive line coach. He is, man, but, you know, I, I call him a player's coach too. You know, he's done a great job with me, just allowing me to play my game and coaching off of that. You know, so often you have a lot of offensive line coaches that dial in on their specific techniques and say, this is the only way I want you to win. And, you know, Frank's a realist, man. He played the game. He did it for a while. He's been coaching for a while. He's coached some of the best, uh, you know, and he's allowed me to continue to go out there every single day and better my game and allow me to be myself while also coaching off of that. And it's very rare, man that you find that combination in the offensive line coach and it's just allowed me to continue to soar and allow me to continue to get better over this training camp that sounds like a perfect fit to me here's why because there aren't a lot of guys that are 6'8 300 you're different 
And so you can't coach you the same way you would coach other tackles. Is that fair? Exactly. Exactly. You're exactly right. And I think that's where, you know, his coaching stands out, man, is he, he gets it. And he has a great understanding, for, understanding of that. Aces pickleball in Norwood, August 22nd. I might try to sneak you onto the pickleball court. I'll get a game in with you. They probably, I get a game in with you. How about that? I've never played. I've not. Honestly, me either. I'm a huge tennis guy, so <laughs> first time playing pickleball for me as well. <laughs> well, there we, at least you play tennis. It's going to be fun. So uh, make sure you join us there and join Orlando. Appreciate the time. Appreciate you. Looking forward to it.